Do you have a shoebox full of pickups under the bed and you're wondering if they're crooners or criers, screamers or wailers? What is the inner psyche of all of those different pickups? Maybe you've got measurements, resistance, inductance, you know the gauze strength and the magnetic polarity, but what are they really like on the inside? What are they trying to tell you? Well, we're gonna use some software today by Axtec called Bodeplot and it will create and paint some pictures for us of what the inner workings of these guitar pickups are trying to tell us. We're gonna check out how to hook it up and how to use it as we start the next project. We are going to take a rather quick look at the Axtec Bodeplot user interface. In the lower left hand corner, we have input output level meters. To the immediate right of the level meters, we have a cluster of four buttons, which are start and stop, a start and stop generator, a start and pause swipe, and also a clear button. Moving again to the right, we have a cluster of four dials for minimum and maximum frequency, gain, and volume. We will be taking a deeper look at these as we get into testing our first pickup. Moving again to the right, we have two checkbox options. One is a six decibel per octave output reduction. The other is a coil driver load, which we'll talk about again in a little bit. Moving up one level of controls, we have four unique plots. Each plot can contain one scan of a pickup. We can name the scan, we can capture the scan, we can load the scan, we can save the scan, we can hide the scan, we can clear the scan. A lot of options here. And at the top of the interface is our visual graph, which each scan will be representative in a separate color. The first scan is in the cyan, the second is in green, the third scan is in white, and the final scan is in yellow. So they're all color-coded. You can turn these on and off, hide them basically, export, save, load at will. This setup example is on an Apple Macintosh. We go to System Preferences, open up the Sound tab or the Control Panel. Under Output, we choose Scarlett Solo USB. Under Input, we again choose Scarlett Solo USB, which is our audio interface. Jumping over to the Focusrite Control Panel, we really don't need the Settings part of the panel, so we can close out of that for now. We are not going to use the analog one, so we can turn that off. Going over to analog two, we are not gonna use the first option, but we will choose instrument. And that's about it. We can close out of these windows and launch Axtec Bodeplot. With Bodeplot running, go up to File, Audio, which will open the Audio MIDI Settings panel. Under Output, go to Scarlet Solo USB. The input, go to Scarlet Solo USB. Under Active Output Devices, I choose Output 1. Active uh, uh, Input Devices, I choose Input 2. And we really don't need to check the sample rate or anything, but you can go up to Test and click and listen for an audible tone. If you don't get it, maybe switch back to Built-in Output. Check it again. When you're done, make sure you're still on Scarlet Solo USB. You can exit out of this window and we're ready to move on to the next step. The Focusrite Scarlet connects to your computer using a USB cable. In this first example, we're connecting a single coil pickup to the Scarlet. The coil driver lays flat on the top of the pickup and connects to the headphone port of the front of the Scarlet Solo. The pickup itself connects in this case with some alligator clips and a quarter inch jack to the instrument in of the front of the Scarlet Solo. Connecting a humbucker is pretty much the same except you stand the coil driver on its side, as shown, instead of laying it flat, like you would on a single coil. You can also test the pickups in a guitar you would use just a typical guitar cable from the output of the guitar to the instrument in of the focus right. And you would have to be able to get the coil driver under the strings and lay it accordingly on the pickup. So you may have to do a little juggling there, but it can be done. 
If you decide to give this software a try, I strongly recommend you go to the Axtech website and follow the setup instructions about how to dial in your input output meter and everything. And then uh, after that, do some testing of your own to find out what the minimum maximum frequency is the gain and volume you need to get repeatable and reliable scan results. The coil driver that I use was purchased from Axtech as well. And with that purchase comes the ratings that you'll need to use for the particular coil driver. In this case, it's 118 ohm and 0.4 millihenry. And once you're ready to start doing some scans, know that you can adjust the minimum and maximum frequency range so you can cut off some of the lead in and some of the tail end frequency sweep. So you can shorten the bandwidth, so to speak, of the range of scanning that you're doing to give yourself maybe a little bit quicker scans. It's time to start our first testing. We have two separate P90s, both with coil taps, hooked up for our testing. And you can see I have the minimum and maximum frequency set to 500 hertz up to 15 um, kilohertz. That's just to narrow the total sweep uh, that the Bode plot software is going to be checking. So we've got our first test running, and this is actual speed, so it goes pretty quick. Uh, once I get my plot run, I hit capture, give it a name, whatever makes sense to you. In this case, I'm calling it P90-2 because this is the second P90 in a batch of three. Uh, hitting save, save it to wherever you want to put it on your computer. This does work on a PC also. I'm just showing it on a Mac at the moment. We've changed the wiring connection and we're starting our second swipe here. Uh, and where's my, there we go, getting it started. Again, this is actual speed of uh, the scan. It goes pretty quick, what's it take? 30 seconds maybe, I don't know. Um, not all scans will take the same amount of time. Since I have cropped the uh, starting point and the end point off a little bit, uh, you know, going from 500 uh, hertz up to 15 kilohertz, it does shorten the overall uh, scan just a little bit. So we're saving this out, saving it to uh, saving a file out to the same folder just so I can start collecting all the data that I'm capturing. Here we're starting our second pickup of the two we're testing, and this would be the third plot, the third scan. Have everything all wired up, hit the uh, start swipe button and the scan starts. Depending on your start frequency and your max frequency, or your, your minimum and your max frequencies, the scan may take a little bit longer, but this is kind of an average. Again, once it's done, I hit pause, and then I capture, give the scan or this plot a name, and save it to my folder so I'm collecting everything in one spot. Second pickup, this will be our fourth plot. I switched my wiring around a bit because remember I'm doing uh, P90s with a coil tap. So one uh, scan or one plot is the full wound pickup. The other scan, I swap the wiring so I'm getting the tap part of the count of the, of the pickup. So we can see that our peaks are in slightly different places representing the wind of the pickup and where the tap in this instance is. You can do other things with this software as well. You can test a, a strap pickup with a base plate. You can test it both ways with and without. And yes, it does make a difference in the boat plot. Here we're exporting all of our findings to a, a CSV file for Excel. So you can create a database of all of these. I'm not going into that in this video, but you can actually replicate the boat plot in Excel, then create little uh, spaghetti charts to overlay different pickups and see how they stack up against each other, basically. You can hide and show uh, the different scans or different plots, overlay them. You can also clear any one or all of the plots and then load them back in, which is pretty nice. So say you uh, have a P90 you want to stack up and compare against a humbucker or a strat coil or something. You can see where the, the peaks and uh, the different 
overlays of the pickups stack up against each other. So here are some quick scans. Uh, Ibanez Geo Humbuckers, a dirt cheap guitar. The uh, P90 coil tap pickups we did uh, in this uh, episode. Uh, you can see the full scans and also there are the taps full. And here's a weird one, a quad rail humbucker. Hmm, strange. Uh, here is the Strat with base plate test. We got brass and we have two different thicknesses of steel base plate. And it doesn't seem to matter how thick the steel base plate is. That's interesting. The Axtech website, they have a home products help and download. Uh, at the moment, he has the abode plot license for 50 bucks. I did learn that Axtech is not selling the coil driver any longer. Uh, basically, they're finding that everybody's just making their own. So if anybody is interested, I will try to put together some information on how to take an old bobbin from, like, say, a humbucker and uh, convert it into a coil driver. Let me know. We'll see what we can do to help you out there. I'm using the Focusrite Scarlet Solo, I believe it's called. Pretty simple interface. Um, I did wire in the driver to a quarter inch jack and also some alligator clips to hook up pickups. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. I hope this is interesting to somebody. I hope it helps. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Give it a thumbs up whether you like this video or not. Uh, leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Ring the bell for future notifications. Take care of yourselves. Bye.